out uh, about a week or two ago of uh, the the feminist activist that was on the subway and she was pouring I think they said it was bleach uh, on all those who were you know man spreading and we're like look at this this is crazy well we find out now that that actually is Russian propaganda that never happened that was filmed by the Russians and put into our system as a poison to get us to hate feminists more. Say, look at how exactly what we did. We're going to take you to a story I, I thought was a joke. I thought was a joke. Where have the Russians gone? How deeply are they into our, into our consciousness what will they actually do? Is it all about politics? Stephen Kent, friend of the uh, uh, program and, uh, and quite honestly, a, I mean, probably the biggest Star Wars geek on the planet. Welcome to the program. Stephen, how are you? Doing well, Glenn. Good morning. Um, tell me this is a joke. <laughs> it's not a joke. Um, there is a study out. Um, from Morton Bay at the University of Southern California that looks at the role that online bots, particularly the Russian persuasion, might have played in the discourse on social media surrounding The Last Jedi. Now, that wait, might wait, 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 wait. Yeah. So you just kind of read by surrounding The Last Jedi. <laughs> the movie. Yeah, the Last Jedi. Nice okay. low-hanging target being a Star Wars movie. What do people care about more than politics? I would say that it's probably the light side versus the dark side and the eternal struggle in a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> you know, you know you've know, you mentioned, Glenn, like they prey on these very emotional um, and personal personal issues on social media. It's not just about politics and Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. It can be about kneeling, the national anthem. It can be about something that a celebrity might have said, and then it's amplified and sort of turned up to 11 so that people get really heated about it. Star Wars is in that category, too, and there might be some evidence to show that this is actually happening every day. Give me the evidence. This is incredible. Yeah, so it's it's circumstantial in many ways, but that's by nature of what we're dealing with here. When you're talking about foreign influence and particularly malicious activity coming from Russian bots or trolls or sock puppet accounts, you are talking about uh, a moving target, people who are deleting their accounts, changing their information, making new accounts, staying active so that they can't actually be tracked to a given location. And if Morton Bay, the researcher at USC, could prove definitively that the these are Russian agents, then he should be working at the CIA. But he's not. He's just a researcher at USC. And what you look at is you look at the characteristics of social media accounts online, kind of what, do I, what I just mentioned is what behaviors do they engage in? Do they speak in all caps? What words do they use? And then is their account there the next week when you look them up again? These are sort of things that you look for when you're talking about foreign influence online. And it might be Russians, it might be the Chinese, it might be Iranians, or it might be some Floridian with a bone to pick with the rest of the country. So, you know, but that's, so that's what did they plant? Live in. What did they plant into our society? Well, in this case, what they planted, um, there was evidence that there were 16 accounts that could specifically be Russian-linked, 105 that sort of had a question mark as to where they could be originating from that are jumping online when The Last Jedi comes out and people are starting to debate about the movie. And then they start throwing in the tweets about the feminazi Admiral, <laughs> Admiral Holdo, and then they start throwing in tweets about how uh, masculinity is under assault because Poe Dameron wasn't able to lead the ship. And then they start mm. throwing in tweets about SJW droids and the fact that there was a droid in the hospital. I remember world. those. Yeah. And, and so, and, but the important thing, Glenn, is that that comes from real people too. And you can't really distinguish what comes first, like the chicken or the egg. Did the, did the Russian, you know, bot or troll online plant the thought in a conservative or, you know, activist or Star Wars fan online and then they sort of echo it? Or did it go the other way around? Um, because it is reasonable to look at Star Wars and see some sort of like, you know, progressive fingers in the pot. But there's also this discourse course online that happens where you sort of amplify other opinions that you see. You see someone upset about the feminazis now taking over Star Wars, Kathleen Kennedy or, you know, the, the, the Asian girl in the new Star Wars movie. And if you get 
amplified about that and feel like, oh, well, someone else is angry about that too. I can now feel a little bit more angry. Then the, the discourse just rapidly um, gets more radical. And it's pretty reasonable to think that there are foreign actors who engage in this malicious activity. It's, it, I, Stephen, it's, it's interesting, I think, and this is part of the crime against journalism that's happened, making mm. every effort of what Russia has tried to do in America about Donald Trump. You know, yeah. it's like, look at the look at the scope of this. The fact that they are trying to go in there and stir people up over Star not just Wars. politics, but culture and, yeah. and, and Star Wars and, and all of these kind of separate things, Kaepernick, all of this stuff. And not just separating us, Stu. I think also a pl um, pushing us into a place. I hear this all the time. I know I am like this. When, when did everything become political? They're pushing Everything, yeah. all pop culture, everything into politics. Yeah, there's a great book out right now called Addicted to Outrage by Glenn Beck. <laughs> towards, the, towards the end of part one, and at least in the audio book, it's chapter 19, they're talking uh, a lot about the role that foreign actors and particularly Russians might play in trying to sow discord. And what we do know about Russians that were able to do in the 2016 election, we don't know if they actually were able to uh, impact the results and how people voted, but we are able to determine that they, they get their fingers into the way that we talk. Um, and What's most important, I think, about American politics and culture is not that we are able to agree on everything political, but that we're actually able to go to a movie theater and sit next to our neighbors in the dark and smile at a Star Wars movie. But then when you go in and you've sort of been reading these things online and you've had people tell you that now it's like liberal propaganda and that it's not the Star Wars you grew up with, then you can't even do that. And think about what that does to a culture, not in the course of one year. But in the course of 10 years, we have, we'll, we'll have nothing in common if we allow people to manipulate us like this and get us hooked on outrage on a constant basis about anything, whether it's politics or media. Stephen, uh, thank you for um, writing about this. This is in the Washington Examiner. Thank you for watch, uh, 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 writing about this. Is it, is it because it was Star Wars that this popped up on your radar? Or why is it that no one else is is catching this, Stephen. Well, I would say that there was a pretty good deal of writing done about this. And for me, I did catch this because I've got Google alerts set up for Star Wars and I care <laughs> a lot about it. But, you know, I, I live in Star Wars Twitter as well as conservative and libertarian Twitter. You know, these are kind of the different ecosystems. And the dialogue in Star Wars Twitter is, is toxic. It was so mean when these movies came out, particularly around Solo and The Last Jedi. The Last Jedi really sort of agitated right-wing Twitter. And Solo really ad, uh, agitated left-wing Twitter. Everybody was arguing about these different things and just using language that you just don't see or you didn't see a couple of years ago in Star Wars. And then you turn on your favorite conservative podcast, right? And I have a couple. And they're sort of then echoing those sentiments. And then their actual fans are going out and engaging in Star Wars discourse. But there's, it's not really clear, like, who is genuine and who is not and who's coming to it as a really interested fan and who's coming to it as a political activist who just really wants to make people angry. And that's what we have to remember when we get online is there is no guarantee that the person, even if they have a real name and a photo associated with their account, is a genuine human being who wants you to leave this conversation happy. I don't know if you've ever won an argument on Twitter. I have not. Um, but it's the, it's the equivalent of a foreign city. You need to be getting off the airplane in this new city and just assume that you're not safe anywhere you go and you should just talk to people that you know and that you trust. Stephen, thank you very much. Always good to talk to you. Yeah, Glenn, real pleasure. May the force be with you both. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Kent. He's got a great sense of humor. He has a he's really a smart guy. You listen to his uh, podcast, uh, follow him at Twitter. What's his What's his Twitter handle? Uh, it's got to be like Yoda kicks ass. I think it is Yoda smell. <laughs> oh, I lost it. Uh, here, here we go. It's uh, at uh, Stephen uh, underscore Kent eighty nine. Yeah, follow him. He's uh, he's he's a smart smart guy. All right, our sponsor this half hour is Filter by.